Welcome to the Intuitive Hour with psychic medium, author, and intuitive life coach, Michelle Beltran. The Intuitive Hour will empower you to learn how to magnify your intuitive voice. Listen in and expand your understanding of what it means to be psychic and how to awaken, amplify, and trust your inner voice. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the Intuitive Hour, Awaken Your Inner Voice. I'm your host, Michelle Beltran, and we are here with another wonderful episode all about empaths, highly sensitive people, and clairsentience. I'm real happy you're here. This is an exciting episode I was very happy to put together, and it is inspired by an avid listener of the intuitive hour who wanted to know the difference between an empath and a clairsentient. All right, so let's begin. Uh, This is really actually much easier than you might think. Indeed, there are some similarities between the three, but there is one stark difference. And as you're listening today, see if you can tune into that. Okay, so first I will say that you might think of each of these abilities in layers. One being slightly more enhanced than the next, yet equally special in their own way. They are indeed similar, as I've mentioned, and you may be exclusively one more so than the other as well. You might also have all three of these abilities in place. Remember that regardless of your lean or ability, these are true gifts. Honor them, care for them, and use them for the highest of good love and light. Set the intention to use your gifts to guide, support, and help those in need spreading your own light throughout the world in the process. All right, let's begin. The highly sensitive person. What exactly is this? It's also been referred to as the acronym states HSP. This term actually began to receive notoriety some years ago by a psychologist named Dr. Elaine Aaron. She discovered through research and various studies that as much as 20% of the population is gifted with a unique and heightened sensitivity to the world around them. These people get things quick. They are a step ahead. And they are very inclined to notice more around their external stimuli and environment than the average person. So how do you know if you're highly sensitive? First, you're going to know by a sensitivity to all of your senses, smell, taste, sound, feelings or emotions, sight as well. In addition, the highly sensitive person might also be sensitive to certain foods or flavors, things like caffeine, or even the smallest doses of medicine will really affect the highly sensitive person in more dramatic ways than the next person. If you find that you are sensitive to bright lights, for example, especially fluorescent lights, you may be a highly sensitive person. Bright lights will overwhelm you. You may even hear the humming that comes with some of these fluorescent lights, and that may actually agitate you, that subtle low humming that can come from these kinds of lights. The highly sensitive person must have quiet time after they've been in a very sensory rich, loud, busy setting. Think of the last time you were at the airport or a zoo or an amusement park or a performance of some kind. 
Did you need to just go have some quiet time in solitude? Did you just need to go lay down and rest? Very classic characteristic of a highly sensitive person. The highly sensitive person will be also very sensitive to works of art. If you have been to an art gallery or show or exhibit of some kind, do you recall being emotional when you saw a piece? Did it even bring tears to you? You might also notice an an uneasiness as a highly sensitive person when you have a long list of things to get done. You're just on edge constantly. And last, the sense of smell is very heightened for a highly sensitive person. The odoriferous settings leave you at times overwhelmed and in need of fresh air right away. And sometimes a very strong smell you may also feel occasionally in your body space. So in summary, the highly sensitive person is very emotionally in tune to their environment. Yet in many cases, they just don't know why. They subconsciously receive the often very subtle clues in body language, tone of voice, or voice intonation, we call it, and or facial expressions of those around them or that they're interacting with. All right, moving on to the empath. The empath can now, adding a layer on to this ability, feel the emotions of others around them, and this includes animal life. They are highly sensitive to the energy field of humans or animals. And we often call this the aura, that energy field around animals or humans or anything living for that matter. They're very in tune to that field and can feel the emotions of others. The difference here though, again, as we add on this new layer, is that the empath will absorb the emotional energy of those around them taking the emotions on as if they were their own. Yes, they literally experience the exact same emotional effects in their own bodies of those near. So let's move into a classic empath versus highly sensitive person experience to bring some more clarity for you on this. Okay, so the scenario is this, a heated conversation or even argument is occurring in a room or setting of some kind between two people. The highly sensitive person, unaware of this tense, heated conversation, knocks on the door and enters the room and the two inside do a splendid job of acting as though nothing happened. The highly sensitive person, upon entering the room, would sense the tone of the room immediately because they can perceive these ever so subtle cues, as we mentioned, of body language and voice intonation and facial expression, regardless that these cues may be hidden quite well by the couple, they still tune into them. Now, though, the empath enters that same room, but they do so even hours later. Hours after the arguing had taken place, the two have left the room, and the empath will enter and still feel and even absorb the emotional residual energy from the argument without any obvious physical evidence that it took place. So perhaps that will help you to understand the difference between the two a little bit further. There really is no hard, fast rule, but you might think of it like this. Most empaths 
are highly sensitive people, but not all highly sensitive people are empaths. Okay, a few examples of empathic traits. The empath will have to turn off the television when they see violence or tragedy. It's too much. They can't watch it. Off the TV goes. The empath will literally feel the emotion of others when they are near them. They have a pain of heartache in their heart. They have a literal aching in a limb, a headache that they know isn't their own. And sometimes they don't know, but often they do. They know it's not their own. It's resonating from someone around them. If you're an empath, you might find yourself rooting for the losing team or the underdog in a particular situation. You find yourself wanting to root for those who need support or appear to be on the losing end. Empaths are very creative, have extremely rich imaginations, and so will, and so will also have very vivid dreams as a result. Do you notice bright colors, loud sounds, strong emotion in your dreams, particularly the last one as you wake? Very classic empathic trait. Also, an empath will have a very strong sense when someone is being dishonest with them. They are natural healers, often involved in the healing, medicinal, or therapeutic arts kinds of industries. These are just a few traits, some that may resonate with you. There are many, but very classic, more typical signs of the empath. Now then, adding on yet another layer, we explore the clairsentient. Clairsentients are often highly sensitive people as well as empaths. Just like empaths, they can sense the emotional energy around them and take it on as their own. The clear feeling ability of the clairsentient expands a bit further though, allowing them to make absolute sense of the information regarding that energy around them. And so here's what I mean by that. Clairsentients have a sixth sense or heightened sensory ability that takes them beyond mere physical or emotional sensation or knowing. Their ability allows them to add in a component of knowing, much like the clairvoyant receives knowing through visions or images. So the clairsentient may have a physical sensation response to a person around them, such as a tingling in their hands, and know with absolute certainty this person needs a physical healing or is in need of some kind of healing. They may feel a throbbing in their throat or that throat chakra area and receive a direct knowing of this feeling, what to do next, such as this person is sick with a cough, healed from cancer in that area recently, or perhaps it's a little more, more symbolic and there is a need for this person to express and communicate more in life, set boundaries around their world and life and the people in it. Along with their heightened sensory awareness and ability to absorb the emotional energy of those around them, clairsentients also gain great knowing, symbolic, factual, or physical from extrasensory perception that they can then use to guide someone. Using our scenario mentioned, 
regarding the two people in the room involved in the heated argument, the clairsentient would enter the room hours later and not only tune into the energy of the room, but they would also be able to perceive clear and specific knowing regarding details about the two in the argument, such as a sense about what they were arguing about or why. They may also feel in their body the sensations one or the other was feeling during the tense interaction. A heart racing, sweating palm, sweaty palms, or a sense of grief. They may also get a sense through feelings of what's impending, such as a breakup or divorce. So when we look at the clairsentience abilities and traits, they're quite unique. You know you're a clairsentient because you give more attention to the feelings of experiences in your life. You're very in tune to the feel aspect of how you show up in the world. For example, your language includes words like feel, touch, sense, versus hear, see, or smell. You might say, for example, in a conversation with a coworker, as I consider this project, I feel, or you might say, as I consider this project, I'm sensing this about it. Instead of saying, as I consider this project, I'm hearing you say, there's a difference there. You're using the words of feel and sense as opposed to hear or envision in your language, saying, here, using the word here lets us know that your lean is toward clairaudient, which means clear hearing. Using the word envision or see lets us know that your lean is toward clairvoyance, which means clear seeing. So pay attention to your language as an expression of what resonates within you. A classic clairsentient response is the chills in your body. When this happens, pay attention to what's happening around you and become aware of higher consciousness signs, symbols, and messages presenting for you in the moments surrounding this time. Also, as a clairsentient, you've likely experienced a sensation of a slight touch somewhere on your body, perhaps a shoulder, to look back and find that no one is there. You feel the emotions of others. This emotion often manifests physically in your body, and that would be inside your body or outside your body. And you have a sense of knowing through a heightened sensory ability what this is related to and or how you can help. And that's the key difference between the empath and the clairsentient. All right, everyone, there you have it. This was a fantastic episode here, actually a question and answer episode uh, inspired by our listener who wanted to know the difference between an empath and a clairsentient. I thought it was a fantastic question. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Remember that there are many similarities between these three terms. However, there is a stark difference between each that accounts for the main difference between them. Also remember that you might be one or have a lean or ability to all three. Over time, learning and development of your skill and ability helps you better discern this knowing. 
I hope that this new level of understanding of these, what I call emotional abilities, have pointed you in a new and valuable direction. All right, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your week. And I look forward to to visiting with you all here next week. All right, bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Intuitive Hour with Michelle Beltran. If you like what you heard, please share our podcast with a friend. And be sure to visit michellebeltran.com to get Michelle's popular Develop Your Clairvoyance ebook.